Beloved, I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful opportunity do we have yet once again to be able to just tune in to this channel and come and discuss some things from the Word of God. and Just get ourselves in a place where we learn uh, on a daily basis the importance of understanding the Word of God. It is true that so many times we just read the Word of God and it's being quoted out of context. And that causes us to find ourselves in a very dangerous place when we take the Word of God, not understanding the context, what is meant, and then just applying that. That's also where people stumble and they fall and they do not understand, and then all of a sudden they start to question God, whether it is true, whether God does listen, whether God hears them when they cry out unto him. Um, is he still who he says he is, the one that will provide? Um, when I'm going through a rough patch, is he the one that will be there for me at all times? So today again, we are going to talk about something and so many times we hear quotes and we want then to make it applicable on the Word of God and not to find it any place but because we interpret scripture we interpret the Bible um, in how we want to understand it that causes us then to stumble sometimes and find it hard and find it difficult to understand God in how he works Especially then when, according to us, things do not really work out. It doesn't measure up to God's word. Ever came into a place like that and find yourselves in a spot where you start to doubt with times? Because, Lord, if, if that's the case and your word is the truth, then I don't understand. I'm not sure whether what I am then reading or learning whether it is the truth or not. Rest assured, beloved, truth to you, the channel that we have established and that have been placed on YouTube for us just to go back and uh, again just listen to the Word of God and find out what it is that the Bible teaches us. Yes, it's true, we are coming closer and closer to the end of 2021 and we find ourselves with this broadcast then already in December the last month of 2021 who would have thought that it will just come down on us so quickly but yes, it is true. This is where we are. And I pray that the word that I want to share with you today, that that will also just come and bless your heart. It's always so great and such a privilege to be able to record this and broadcast it and send it out so that people who are interested in studying the Word of God and uh, trying to become of the truth, know what is the truth and not what we so many times hear as pastors and ministers of the Word will just bombard us with. That's why I cannot urge you enough and I cannot plea with you enough to rather go and make sure that you take the Word yourself, read it. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal it. Ask Holy Spirit to give you that input into your heart and um, that understanding, illumination to, to really grasp the Word of God and not to fall into that pattern of where we come to a place and we just swallow up and eat up anything and everything that is given unto us. That's why I always say that even when I minister the word, you have to 
make sure that it agrees with what God's word is saying. Now, I can almost hear you saying, yeah, but Andre, uh, so many times those who, who minister the word of God and, and, and according then perhaps to you what is wrong and quoted and ministered and preached on uh, out of context, how do we know? I think what is important, if you don't find anything they say uh, on that, if you don't find it in the word of God, uh, don't. But it is because we lack in the knowledge. And here at the end uh, of almost at the end of 2021, I really want to come and emphasize it again. And thank you so much on behalf of Neely and myself for tuning in and listen to all of the sermons that uh, have been brought and have been broadcasted um, over this year. We are fortunate and grateful that God grants us this opportunity to be able to do so. But before I'm going to start, you, you may turn so long if you would like to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and you would have noticed in the starting of this broadcast, also the title of the message, which we will get to just now. But I wonder if I can ask you, uh, just before we're going to start, um, just to sing a song with me. I can easily wait until the end, and it will fit in there anytime in and during the message. It will fit in. But I want to come and bring this to you. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus, and I've Presence 
and just to welcome him and just address you on his word. Second Corinthians chapter 4, and I would like to read verses 13 and 14. The Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth, yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had, who wrote in Scripture, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe, Paul says, therefore we also speak. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will present us along with you in his presence. And I want you to listen today to what I believe that God just wants to share with us from his heart. Ever heard the expression, if God brings you to it, he will take you through it. Nothing can be further from the truth. I've used it myself. And then as one grows and become more mature in the Lord and you start to understand scripture, we so many times find things and try to find things in the word of God. And the same, of course, with this quote, if God brings you to it, he will take you through it. He will bring you through it. A quote that so many times we have heard, we heard it from pulpits, we will hear it when people will minister the word or address people on spiritual things. We will even get quotes that says, if God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Actually, it is not a true statement because there's a lot of things that we have to take into consideration. There's just a question, what if God brings something that you desires uh, to enter into that and you stay there but things do not work out? I can hardly imagine that God will sort of put us in certain things that he doesn't think we are capable and mature enough to be able to handle circumstances and situations that he will take us through. A simple question, what if the it is meant to per perfect you and me and or fulfill his desire to enlarge his kingdom, what then? You see, church, I know that perhaps some of us may disagree. But remember what I said, I'm only here to straighten up things and to bring perspective into what we are bombarded with and what we learn and what people teach us and expect us just to believe it. We, we must understand um, that what God brings to us is something that you and I do not always understand. And perhaps people will not today agree. And there are many who will present various verses of Scripture to substantiate their statement and their teaching in the fact that God wants only what is prosperous. I have spoken to you on this numerous times. I've mentioned it, and today we come back there in Jeremiah 29, 11, and where God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And 
we hear so often, especially from the prosperity teaching, this is what they use and um, it should encourage us then that God is faithful to his word. But you see, we, we must understand that when people quote it, it is quoted out of context. It is true that all scripture is God-breathed. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. That, that, is, that is absolutely true. And that it's profitable. But you see, when we look, for instance, at Jeremiah 29, 11, and this is not the verses that we are talking about, it is not an absolute promise for all believers. And there are many instances, many cases, where I can use examples, quoting this out of context, where people just simply experienced more hardship and failure. And the very those who then preach this will say, it's because you do not have enough faith. That cannot be further from the truth. Again, if we utter such statements, it simply means that we have judged. You hear me? We have judged. And then we condemn others. Whilst perhaps we are standing in a position where we, we do not really can do it. Can I read verse 13? And 14 of 2 Corinthians again, chapter 4. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote in Scripture, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, therefore we also speak. And with that, as a cross-reference, we can go read Psalm 116, verse 10. Would you care to turn with me there quickly? Let's clear the air. And let's read then Psalm 116. And then we can just get clarity on the whole thing. Verse 10, I believed, and, and this uh, is a psalm written for thanksgiving for rescue from death. He says in verse 10, I believed and clung to my God when I said, I am greatly afflicted. You hear? I am greatly afflicted. What does that mean? We go through affliction. So, but the main focus point is, is that we believe. We have faith and we have that faith in God. Is everything that you and I will go through, is all of that meant to be, to stay in it? At the end, we will see, and I'm going to change the quote that we started with. If God brings you to it, he will take you through it. We, we will change that, but not as yet. So, Jeremiah 29, 11 was a specific promise to the surviving elders, the priests and prophets and people of Israel that had been led away into Babylon, into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar. That Israel would be released to return to Jerusalem after God's judgment was completed. And in the meanwhile, they were exhorted by God through Jeremiah to pray for peace and submit to authority, the authority that God had placed them under. You see, God had brought them to it. Do you understand? And, and, and this is something that I want you to sort of just get it clear. God brought, if you look at Daniel, if you look at the three Hebrew boys, there are so many instances, if we look at these things, Job, etc. God brought them to certain things. So, in it, Daniel flourished exceedingly and was used mightily by God to further his plan of salvation and present a prophetic presence of, of God. God did not bring 
Daniel through it. Daniel died in the land of captivity. You understand? Hence from me coming in saying that we cannot say when God brings you to it, he will take you through it. So, this of course being true, nonetheless, Daniel maintained an, an uncompromised trust in God. He trusted God with all of his heart and he sought the Lord in everything that he did. In spite of being in it, it. If God brings you to it, that it, we have to define that it. What is that it? And if we look at Daniel's circumstance, we, we find that it's totally something different, perhaps, than yours. And I think we should be careful in what we say. So, Imagine Matthew 26, 39, Jesus said, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. It was as if Jesus was praying, Father, I know you have brought me to it. You will bring me through it. Or must I stay in it? So a question on that, aren't we grateful that God did not release Jesus from it? Jesus was in it. And I'm trying to avoid not to give anything away before we come very close to the end to understand. You see, beloved, if, if, if I may, Our theme song for 2021. Let your word, O oh Lord, grow within me. Let it fill my heart and ear. Help me to grow into maturity to be closer. Discovered, and we came to a place where we understand Scripture. We understand the Word of God. It will help us to live a balanced life. It will help us not to open our ears and our hearts to things that can harm us, even though coming from the Word of God. You see, can you imagine in this quote, 
God brought Jesus to the cross. So, and then we say, if God brings you to it, he'll, he will take you, God will bring you through it. He will take you through it. So, being that, Jesus yet still died. Do you understand and catch my drift? God didn't take him through it. And, and, and we'll change it at the end, but not as yet. So bear with me. And this is what I want you to try to understand in, in, in what it is. So, and if I would have had a board, I can explain it. God did not re release Jesus from it. If God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. You understand? It sounds good. It sounds biblical. It sounds legit. But there's no verse to support this. There's none. All that we get is, is that verse 14 says that knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will present us along with you in his presence. And God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, raised Jesus from the death. So you and I will be raised from death. Dead. But we are going through it. Do you understand what I'm getting to? Up to where we are now, what would you say? We have been brought to this point across, across the globe. We have been brought to this point of the pandemic and the virus. And by the time you will listen to this, um, more will have been made available and will become clearer when it comes to a fourth strand, as they call it, and fourth wave, uh, what we in South Africa will go through. But, beloved, you see, let us just understand. Let us take Job. Let us take Job. God brought Job to it. And, and, and we know, we know the story. We know 100% what happened with him. He was tested. Listen, he was tested with Satan being authorized by God to do the testing. And I don't have time to go into it, but go read Job again. Go read the background of Job to understand. So he lost all his cattle, his sheep, his herd, his camels, his wealth, his children, and potential grandchildren. He lost all of that. God brought him to it. God allowed Satan to test him. But Job had absolutely no sensing of God's presence while he was in it. He didn't know. So in it, he said, and we can read Job 23. Will you turn there with me quickly? Let us read Job 23, verse 8 to 12. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept. And not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food.
So, because we, we are looking at Scripture on this side of Calvary, remember, on this side, the plan of salvation made manifest. We have insight into the testing of Job's faith that he did not have. Nonetheless, he maintained his faith and trust in God, in it, even though God did not bring him through it. Do you understand? And that church brings us really to, to a place where we should more and more start focusing on reading the word of God in, in context. And that is, that is the most important thing for me, that we will get there. We sang it through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Understanding what God wants us to understand. Paul even quoted Psalm 116, which we have read already, verse 10. And he says, I believed. Therefore, I have, have I spoken, I was greatly afflicted. The psalmist says, did you see this? I was greatly afflicted. And we cannot today come and sort of put the blame, all of it, in front of God's door. One thing I know for certain, beloved, and that is that God's promises are all true. And if he said something, God will never, with all due respect, back off on his word. His word is yea and amen. Thy word, Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let your word, O Lord, let that word today, let it grow within me. Let that become more and more. So that I can grow in my faith, even though I will be tested, even you will bring me to it. That I will understand, you will never ever tempt me above my strength, above my powers. God will never do that, beloved. He knows exactly what it is that you and I are capable of. God will never be unfair. Never. And, and I have learned to trust him in that. I have learned to just simply be there where I know that because he's faithful, he, he will help me. And he, he shows me on a daily basis. That because of his faithfulness, because of the fact that he's trustworthy, even though he bring me to it, even though God brings me to it. He'll be there. Nothing will change. You see, If we hear Paul 
describing every challenge, the tests, the obstacles that he had faced. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Can, can we go there? Let us have a look. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and let us read the word of God and, and just get a clearer picture of what we have on the table today. Verse 8, the word of God says, Con Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. Whatever Paul, that thorn in the flesh, whatever it was, did God take it away? No. So for us today to make the statement in saying that if, if God brings me to it, he will take me through it. That does not really come and tell us. And we might think that but God, you're not fair. And although what you say in your word, now listen to this. He says, and, and therefore I love it so much. He says in verse 9a, he says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace. Do you hear? He says, my grace is sufficient. God didn't take Paul through. We are coming closer and we're going to hear just now what it is that I want to say to you. He sought God three times to deliver him from that. Just a question. Is there something that you have prayed about and still no answer? And it's as if you want to lose your faith. It's as if though you, you start to really waver in this great God of heaven and earth. Expecting him to perform and do something and nothing come of it. Hang in there, it's coming. I'm going to give you the quote that I feel and that I think and that I've heard, which I think is the right one. That suits us publicly, I think. So, what is it that you and I should understand? See, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. So in other words, God said the following. No, I won't bring you through it, but I'll walk with you in it. And there you have it, beloved. And that changes the whole perspective. So actually the correct statement is, if God brings you to it, he will be with you in it. The songwriter says,
Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. So, beloved, there we have it. That is actually the correct statement. If God brings you to it, he will walk with you through it. He will be with you in it. He will be there. God will be there through it all. Learn to trust in Jesus. Learn to trust in God through it all. So if God brings you to it, he will be with you in it. Remember what I always say, we are never under circumstances, we are in circumstances. Would you care to turn with me to Romans, please, Romans chapter 8, of course, my beloved chapter in the Bible. Not that I love the, not the others, I do love it, but this is just something that caught my attention ever since and I just love the word and Romans chapter 8 he says that and we know using the amplified with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us causes all things to work together as a plan for good. Job, his plan, work out for the good, isn't it? And then he continues and he says, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God. Job loved God. His wife said to him, curse God and die. His friends had a lot to say. But he kept on in what he believed, his faith that he had. For good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. We have been called, beloved, we have been called according to his plan and his purpose. And God is not going to deviate from it. I don't know today what it is that you are going through. You do not perhaps know what it is that I'm going through. But all of us are going through certain things in this life. All of us are experiencing certain things which, which might be difficult to understand. Which might be something that we do not always get to understand. And for me... It is just a matter of trusting God, believing in what God says. And if we believe in what God says, it makes it all the more understandable and to grasp and to know that he will be faithful in what he said he will do. Coming closer to the end, I want you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it will be verse 8. Paul says to the church in Corinth, I'm not saying this as a command to dictate to you, but to prove by pointing out the enthusiasm of others, the sincerity of your love as well. He says, for you are recognizing more clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, his astonishing kindness, his generosity, his gracious favor, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich, abundantly blessed. And then he says, in verse 10, he says, I give you my opinion in this matter. This is to your advantage. Who were the first to begin a year ago, not only to take action to help the believers in Jerusalem, but also the first to desire to do it. So, now finish this, so that your eagerness in desiring, if may, it may be equaled by your completion of it, according to your ability. 
For if the eagerness to give is there, it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. You see, if we then understand what it is that God brings us to, to that eat. Sometimes we cannot see these things as Job did. Daniel did not see it when he was thrown into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't see it when they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And yet, and I state my case, I rest my case. What happened? As the Bible teaches us that there was a fourth walking with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Wouldn't you say then that is proof? If God brings you to it, he will walk with you in it. He will be with you in it. He will be with you in it. Do you hear me? He will walk with you. He will be with you in it. And that's what he did. Even right now, perhaps it seems like but everything is upside down and it doesn't seem whether God is there or not. I promise you he's there. I promise you he will be with you in it. He brings us to a lot of things in our lives. Yours may differ from mine. Mine may differ from the next person's. But if he brings us to it, he most certainly will be with us in it. That's where the verse comes in. I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, hath he said and shall not do it, or hath he spoken and shall not come to pass. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he is blessed, and cannot reverse it. Isn't this awesome? I just love the word of God. It brings such an excitement to my heart. It brings me to a place where I cannot get enough. And this is what I've learned, church. Beloved, this is what I've learned up till this day where I am addressing you in this broadcast. That's what I've experienced. In everything, God was with me. So you and I need to understand that even though affliction may come, even though we may go and experience certain things and go through certain things, God is not taking us through it. God is with us. He will be with us in it. Because there are things that we have to go through. Jesus had to take the cross. He had to. He had to take the sin of the world upon him. So that we today, out of that, could have gained life. Life eternal. Life in abundance, knowing, realizing, understanding his greatness. Do you hear me? So I wonder if I can ask you a favor. I want you to repeat after me. If God brings me to it, he will walk with me, he will be with me in it. Can we say it again? If God brings me to it, he will be with me in it. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Keep on trusting them. And that is something that I really want to come and emphasize to you again. And in closing, Here I am, standing in your presence, giving you my all and who I
for a lot of foreign things that just by storm came into this country of ours. And we are deprived of so many things because of quotes and scripture being quoted out of context, giving a trust just to swallow it up and eat it. Finding ourselves not trusting that anymore. Oh, beloved, the prayer of my heart today is that you will ask Him, ask the Holy Spirit. Spirit to reveal God's word, to open it up, to give you a mind to understand and to live according to that standard, truth, truth, beloved, which will set you and me free. I want you to close with me now. Heavenly Father, you're going to sing it only once. 
We appreciate you. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We love you, adore you. Bow down before you. Heavenly Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the sweet communion with the Holy Spirit be stay and remain with us beloved until Jesus comes again and to that you and I can answer Amen Shalom be blessed stay blessed and Maranatha Amen.